question is why theory is important for understanding the why theory is important we already have we already have seen that that by using theory you can make sense of how different things are linked and you can also make sense of how a society is functioning but if you look at the theories of development there are three major development theories around the world what are these three modernization dependence postmodern okay and there are anthropological parallels to these sort of same sort of yeah interestingly modernization what is the modernization modernization basically presumes development to be an outcome of technology and fund transfer from the advanced countries to the weaker countries technology and fund so you give them technology and you also give them money so that they can build up their infrastructure correct by building up infrastructures they can find and over time can become developed quote and quote developed correct now you can see that this very notion of modernization is absolutely inspired by evolutionism mm -hmm. because evolutionism also presumes that european and american advanced societies are the highest form of society or social integration or the sorry not integration social form highest nature of social form and rest of the world should follow the similar path away to reach them so you can see the modernization theory is basically inspired by evolution now but interestingly if you look at modernization theory uh, and evolutionism both of them in a way or other undermines the value system the systemic condition of the societies which are not indo parent similar kind of ethnocentric bias which plays but if you look at the different kinds of development practices around the world even today most of them even today are inspired by modernization the dependency theory uh, brought a series of question a series of presumptions of modern modernization and dependency theory is actually extremely critical to the concept of modernization now what is our dependency dependency theory says that with over the years with the formation of international monetary agencies like international monetary fund imf like world bank like bfid huh? all these different institutions are what these are all development institutions and they collect fund from the internet from, from the first world countries and then they distribute it to the poorer nations including india bangladesh different african nations etc so dependency theories are to that by injecting fund and by transferring technology different things are happening number one the poorer nations like african countries or india or bangladesh these countries are becoming increasingly dependent on the on the advanced countries this is number one number two they have the opinion that this dependency is so dreadful at the bhayam god that if the super power if those agencies stop giving them money they will simply starve to death right number 3 they argue that in their world is becoming a single system it's it's been conceptualized by scholars like immanuel wallerstein i'll give you the uh, notes okay immanuel wallerstein developed a notion called world systems theory what is the world systems theory immanuel wallerstein according to him that world is now divided into poor countries and peripheral countries what is the poor country poor countries are the countries in which advanced industries are formed like europe like america like china 
or to some extent Russia. So although Russia, Russia's condition was not that good when Wallace Singh was formulating this idea. Anyways, in, you can include many other countries as well. Even in, in, you can include in some ways or the other India as well. I mean, no country is completely peripheral country and no country is completely poor countries. But there are complete peripheral countries if you uh, incorporate the countries like African countries. Pakistan? Uh, I don't think so. Anyways, the question is, these poor countries are manufacturing products, they are pulling resources from the peripheral countries and then they are selling those finished products to the peripheral countries. In a way, the peripheral countries do not have any manufacturing power, therefore they do not really have any negotiation power in terms of world relations. Well, so, in a way, modernization approach of development has made these countries even more dependent instead of making them independent. So, this is how they have criticized the modernization approach of India. Now, after that, especially after 1990s, there is a thing known as postmodernism. What is the postmodernism? That will require another class, but let us just have a small notion of postmodernism. What is the postmodernism? Postmodernism is basically the idea that there is no position for a single grand narrative. In this case, the first thing is that the first thing is that the first thing there is no singular theory which can explain everything around the world. This is number one. Number two, it is more important to look at the local and micro dimensions of different issues. That means if you are looking at poverty, you cannot have a common definition of poverty to define poverty at Sudan and to define poverty at Puriya in West Bengal. It's not possible. Okay. So in but postmodernism is way bigger than this. If you really want to discuss it, we have to have a different class. But let us just remind these two points. Number one, no grand theory. Number two, emphasis on local theory. Okay? Micro dimensions. Now, for a postmodern approach, development should involve a bottom-up approach. What is the bottom-up approach? Bottom-up approach is nothing but no, not at all. Structuralism, structuralism is basically underlying structure. Bottom up approach is like when plannings will be made at the very basic level. That means uh, an all encompassing centralized planning agency will no longer function. An all encompassing centralized planning agency can exist. But it will, it will only act as a collaborator, as a collator, as a collector of different micro plans so that they can reach funds accordingly. This is also known as the decentralization approach. When centralized body of planning and implementation is no longer holding a valid condition, no longer holding a valid position in the policy discourse. Bojangal, policy is jayega thakke, centralized act authority, shabat on the policy goal the beta thakke. That means what is required, exactly, that means what is required at Newtown may not be the same thing which is required at, okay? So this is how, right. Exactly. Right. So this is how decentralization has been implemented. And the implementing agency for India, especially in West Bengal, as we all know, is Panchayat. Okay? This is it.